Hi folks, welcome to Set Apart Homestead. This is Travis, the Prepared Homestead. Today's video is preparing yourselves for a potential economic collapse. Uh, and we'll get into that, not necessarily from a, this isn't a financial advising type of video. It's how to actually prepare yourselves physically for that. Uh, before I get started, YouTube is really cracking down on anything to deal with the C virus out of Asia and uh, they have deleted three of my videos this week in regards to that. I have reposted one of them on uh, natural home remedies that could improve your immune health uh, to help you get through whatever viruses you may have. None of it is from a doctor or medical standpoint but if you'd be interested in seeing that I have posted that video on my Patreon page uh, and if you'd like to see that and sign up to Patreon, uh, there'll be a link below uh, in the description if you are interested in that. Um, apparently, uh, YouTube and other social media outlets do not like the spreading of truth and, and enjoy censoring things. So, anyways, so preparing for economic collapse. Uh, it's something I've talked about. I actually had a, a video on this back uh, last year, towards the end of the year, uh, on how that this new year of 2020 uh, could potentially bring us uh, an economic collapse. And I know we say that every year, and some years it happens. Uh, but there are many things, and if you look at a lot of the uh, financial experts, experts uh, they have been saying for a while that while our economy is doing really good, there are certain indicators uh, that show that it could be on the brink of a downturn. Uh, and then when you add to that certain things that can and are happening around the globe, it can make that downturn turn a lot worse. And while I'm not going to get into uh, the uh, virus outbreak in China, it definitely plays into this subject. Uh, and the point that I, I'm making with that is that there are a lot of people that are not able to work right now in China. There have been numerous reports, officially and unofficially leaked, that um, you know places are shutting down. You know, there's there's millions of people under quarantine. They're running out of supplies. They're not able to just go to work. Uh, and it, what it is happening in that country is it's really greatly affecting their economy right now, but it's going to greatly affect it over the long term. Uh, there is kind of that trickle down effect uh, when it comes to the economy of how things happen right now, but it has great uh, repercussions later on. And that's what we're seeing and will probably continue to see for quite a while in China. And we don't know how bad it could get. It could get much worse. And a lot of the indicators are showing that, that this virus, at least in the epicenter of Wuhan, probably isn't going to peak for another month or two and maybe not until May. So, and that's assuming, you know, that's not even talking about if it, if it really has an outbreak anywhere else. That's just China. And so why is that so critical to us here in America uh, from a financial business uh, and economic standpoint? The reason is, is that China is really the, the world's leader in manufacturing of virtually everything. Uh, there was a report a few years ago talking about how 80 to 85 and somewhere, you know, somewhere between the 80 and 90 percentile uh, mark that virtually all of goods are made in some way in China, whether they're manufactured, the components are manufactured, the raw goods, materials are manufactured. In some way, 80 to 90 percent of everything you purchase in the United States is somehow connected to China. And if their economy starts really tanking, if their people aren't able to go to work, if their factories start shutting down, even for just weeks or a few months, uh, it could definitely cause a huge disruption in the supply chain of goods that people are used to having. Already, Apple uh, has announced that uh, their, their factories are shut down in China and they're not sure when the new iPhones would be coming out or any components for those iPhones, that it may be a, a lag there. Uh, I read a, a news report yesterday of Hyundai, Hyundai, the car manufacturer that's over there. Uh, their uh, plants are shut down due to this virus outbreak. Uh, there's already reports um, of the supplies, of medical supplies are being 
uh, greatly restricted because they're just they're not coming through. Uh, so companies, you know, hospitals and nursing homes that are trying to reorder just their typical supplies, not even necessarily bulking up for a potential pandemic, just ordering normal supplies, they're just not available because maybe everyone's bought them up, but also because they're just not being manufactured right now because the country is in pretty much chaos at this point. And so that's something that we have to factor in when it comes to being prepared. Uh, a lot of people in the preparedness community kind of have this idea, and I think it's because of media hype, that uh, SHTF, uh, it's only one, or two, one of two ways. It's, it's either everything is normal all the time, or it's just a complete apocalyptic situation where rule of law has gone away and everything's in utter collapse. And the reality is, is that there's also a lot of steps in between that can happen. And because our government is you know, the best prepper of them all and has trained and, and planned and spent trillions of dollars over many decades uh, with plans of how to keep the government going and keep the system going to a certain extent during some great SHTF, the reality or the odds of it being a complete total collapse are really slim. Uh, you know, it, it would take, I would guess, it would take some really great uh, a disaster on a, on a large magnitude to completely topple uh, the American government. So even something as big as a, as a widespread pandemic, you're still going to have probably some level of government. I mean, you look over at China right now, they're in a huge pandemic right now, regardless of where, what you believe is really going on. It does have every appearance of just complete chaos, and yet their government still exists. And that's about the only thing that still exists because all of the business and commerce is shutting down because of this disaster. And that's what we can see here, potentially uh, because of a pandemic or just a you know financial collapse, the market collapsing, uh, other natural disasters that could happen. And so we have to be prepared for things like that. And that's what I wanna talk about today are just some items and some things that you can do to kind of prepare yourself because there may be some parts of the system that are still functioning and the others that are absolutely not or not functioning very well. And that can be just as dangerous and difficult for you and your family as if you know everything completely collapsed and toppled down. So one of the things that um, kind of sparked my interest in an article that I read, and this was a congressional study that came out last fall, that 95% of all uh, over-the-counter drugs are manufactured in China. And the, the um, congressional study worried that we were putting too, had too much dependency on China when it came to over-the-counter drugs. Uh, and that they could also potentially taint those over-the-counter drugs. And what I got from that is now that w this is going on in China, if 95% of our over-the-counter drugs and medications are manufactured in China, um, how much of that's gonna start uh, dwindling down here in the United States if they're not able to maintain their manufacturing levels over there? It also stated that just prescription medications that a great majority of the ingredients in prescription medications are made in China. In fact, the, on a business, in the business world, China is looked at as the kind of the world's pharmacist because they manufacture so much of the world's uh, pharmaceutical needs. So something that you should probably start stocking up on are over-the-counter medications. Uh, things like you know ibuprofen, uh, hydrocortisone, uh, uh, Benadryl, uh, things for you know burn creams, itches, itch creams, things like that. There are a lot of natural uh, alternatives and I'm always encouraged using those, but I don't think that it's a bad idea to have on hand uh, a lot of over-the-counter medications. And most of them are quite cheap. You know, your local Walmart, uh, dollar store, Amazon, you can pick up a lot of those things quite cheap. And so it's a, I think it's a good idea to stock up on them because we don't know how much longer we will have them and eventually that you know it may pick up or things might start being manufactured here in the United States. Uh, even the president has indicated that this could be a good thing for the United States because it would bring manufacturing back here. And that's possibly true, but that manufacturing is not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take a while to build that infrastructure that hasn't been there in a very long time and retraining employees that haven't done that type of stuff in so long. Uh, so even if we do bring that manufacturing back home, 
it's going to take a while to get it up and running enough that it, we can supply ourselves and be self-sufficient as a country. So stocking up on some of these things because of what's going on in China is a good idea. Another thing is just cleaning supplies. And some of these cleaning supplies can also, they have multiple uses, for instance, like hydrogen peroxide. Uh, it's obviously looked down mostly as a first aid uh, type of solution, but it can definitely be used in cleaning. Uh, it's much less harsh than bleach uh, to clean like countertops and surfaces, but it works really well at uh, being antibacterial, antimicrobial, antiviral when it comes to cleaning surfaces. Um, bleach is something you can stock up on, but bleach has a short shelf life. It only lasts for anywhere between six months to a year, so I wouldn't go crazy on stocking up on that, but you know, having a six month supply you know, a couple of gallons of it sitting around is not a bad thing. Uh, bleach can be used to purify water, uh, but it's really best used uh, when just disinfecting surfaces. Soaps, uh, definitely something you want to stock up on. I would recommend going with just plain soaps, nothing with all the fragrances and stuff. A plain soap will last for a long time. It just kind of gets harder and harder. Uh, but you can also learn how to make your own soap. Soap is not difficult to make. Even just a simple plain lye soap is really not difficult uh, to make. So I would encourage trying to learn how to do that also uh, just for personal hygiene means. I mean, if, if, if we're dealing with a potential virus outbreak, you definitely want to have good hygiene. Um, other things, you know, toothpaste, feminine products, diapers, uh, whether you're stocking up on disposable diapers or going to cloth diapers, uh, it's definitely some things you want to stock up on. Toilet paper, definitely toilet paper, uh, but they're all alternatives. Uh, you know, as much as people don't want to think about this and use this, you can just, you know, use a reusable rag. It's maybe not the most pleasant thing, but if that's all you have, that's all you have. Uh, and then um, other things like socks and underwear that are, you know, they're also clothing, but it's definitely something to stock up on uh, because, you know, a lot of clothing or most clothing now is made in China or overseas. So uh, having those things that, that wear out more often, especially socks, is certainly something to stock up on. Another thing that I want to point out is heating. Uh, heating is something that uh, many people are dependent upon the system, you know, utilities to heat their home. And having your home heated, especially if you live in colder regions, is kind of more important than cooling because you're more susceptible to die because of the cold than to die because of the heat. You know, you can kind of open the windows. Your house may not be cool, uh, but you can, you know, it's usually a little bit easier to, you know, add air, cooler air into the house because of that. But Keeping your house warm is very critical, and if you use something like wood or certain fuel heat, certain stoves, you can also cook, cook on those surfaces. So even if you are dependent upon utility company for your uh, heat source, you should have a backup plan. Uh, maybe you live in the city and you don't have a wood-burning stove. Do you have maybe a wood-burning stove in your garage or in your shop out back that you can bring in the house and have a plan to at least temporarily use that and vent it out properly through your house uh, so that you can heat at least a portion of your house? And then, of course, having the fuel on hand to do that. Uh, this is something that you should probably consider, uh, whether it's wood or a kerosene heater or some type of heat source, uh, because fuel uh, be, may become more limited or the prices may go up as just the overall market could potentially take a downturn. Uh, another thing that a lot of people talk about is money. Uh, not, not necessarily the saving of money, but how to prep with money, uh, keeping it on hand. And I'm not a financial advisor, but what I would do is keep, on a, keep a certain amount of just actual cash. Um, I've looked at uh, different opinions and usually I think the one that I kind of agree with is maybe build up to a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars in small bills and have it put away because like I said just because we're in some kind of an economic downturn doesn't mean the dollar has no value or won't be accepted a lot of times you know that in, in a lot of cases it still will be uh, because it's not a complete collapse but it will just be difficult uh, to purchase things or to get money so having some cash on hand is definitely uh, helpful. Also, a lot of people like to stock up on gold and silver. You know, you can't eat gold or silver. Um, so 
you know, I wouldn't put all of my money into stocking up on gold and silver, but it certainly would be helpful. And I tend to lean more towards silver, especially what's considered junk silver coins or old circulated American coins um, that have no numistic value, but there is the silver weight value. Uh, and you can get those usually pr pretty cheap, uh, just a little bit over what the, the value of the current market of silver, that's usually what you pay for that kind of stuff. And it's handy to have on hand that people will typically accept that, you know, noticing that it is an American coin that uh, has a certain silver value, 90% silver. Um, if you 60, 1964, pre-1964 uh, coins uh, are silver. Also keeping real copper pennies, not these new ones that are fake copper, but the real copper pennies are also something to keep on hand uh, to use as a trade or a currency. And how much you keep in that, I guess it's really your budget. Uh, again, I wouldn't go crazy. I would, you know, if you have the money, I would rather put most of my money in prep uh, items that include things that I could barter with uh, if you needed to do that, rather than keeping uh, just gold and silver. Because if it's short term, that might be a good thing. But if it's a long term down, uh, people are going to realize that that gold and silver isn't worth as much as that loaf of bread or that bag of rice, because guess what? They're really hungry. So maybe keeping extra prep supplies is also a good idea for bartering purposes. And then water. Water is critical. I talk about it often because it is so important. You need to be able to store water, but also have a way of purifying water. Uh, and if you, have a, if, you, if you go in the route of purifying, which you should, you also need to plan ahead of where your water source is. Do you have a creek nearby, a lake, a pond, uh, some way to pull water up from the well? You need to have a plan for that of what to do with that water and then a good way to purify it, to, to filter it out. Uh, I like Berkey water filters. Uh, they are kind of the industry standard. There are others out there that seem to be nearly as good or just as good as Berkey, but I like Berkey and that's what we use in our home. Um, but something like that would definitely be uh, a good purchase to get because they filter out so many contaminants out of water. And remember, if things start really getting bad and, and utilities are shutting down and water systems and sewer systems are shutting down, you could have uh, sewage backup into water systems, making current water systems much more polluted uh, than they currently are. So always keep that in mind. And then to wrap up the video, just some things to, to knock out. Trash bags, the big commercial heavy duty trash bags. Lots of uses for them, should have them stocked up. Uh, have a plan for waste disposal. You know, your sewer system may not, if you're hooked up to a sewer system, it may, may not be functioning. Uh, and you know, you're gonna go to, have to go to the bathroom. So have a plan for that. Maybe, you know, building an outhouse in the backyard or composting it. Um, garden seeds, definitely have a supply of garden seeds to start uh, a garden, which you should already be doing, uh, but I'll also have them. Tools to repair things. Uh, something that you should have on hand, uh, but start building up your tools. And, and use tools usually work just as well, especially the older ones. Hardware to build and repair things. Uh, a lot of the things like, say, nails and screws come from China, and you know those may not be available for a while, or the price may skyrocket because they're, they're not as plentiful. So having that kind of stuff on hand. First aid supplies. Again, a lot of first aid supplies are manufactured in China. Band-aids, gauze, tape, things like that are manufactured in China. They may become very limited and may become very expensive. So stocking up on those things now uh, could help you in the long run, at least with your pocketbook. Uh, clothing. Clothing is manufactured in China in most, on the most part. And so having clothing stocked up and you can, uh, you know, get stuff used at the thrift stores, but uh, having a supply of clothing and then also things to entertain your family. Uh, because in a financial downturn, if it gets really bad, you may not have things like internet uh, or TV services. So having things to just keep yourselves busy, keep your family busy so they're not losing their mind uh, will be uh, very helpful if things get worse. And uh, the way things are looking in China, I don't know that it's necessarily going to get super bad, but I think there's definitely a potential to see a breakdown in the supply chain here in the United States for a while uh, in the near future because of what's happening currently in China. All right. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.